Chancellor, please accept my warm congratulations on your appointment and it is my great pleasure to now invite you to make your first address as the Chancellor of Falmouth University. Specs for this. Vice Chancellor, several mayors, worshipful so and so's, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, or rather, as we say in Cornwall, maids and bays, students, distinguished guests, undistinguished guests, <laughs> marvelous people, dreadful people. <laughs> and foreigners from Devon. <laughs> Hello. And frankly, thank you so much for inviting me to be installed today as the very first Chancellor of Falmouth University. Yes, installed like a fridge. <laughs> so, Falmouth University the leading university of the arts, or of the multi-arts, in fact, to quote my new boss, the vice-chancellor. Just sorry, on that whole boss thing for a minute. The definition of a chancellor denotes that she is the leader of a university. Okay, ceremonial. Okay, titular, but nevertheless, leader. So there's a chancellor, the leader, and there's a vice chancellor. So let's look at the definition of vice. <laughs> okay, well, there's several. Obviously, she's not a mechanical grip. That would just be silly. Likewise, I don't believe that she's evil, depraved, corrupt, or immoral. But that remains to be seen. No, the third and most likely definition is surely this. A person who serves as a deputy to another. <laughs> the vice chancellor. Not the actual chancellor. <laughs> so if we're honest, I think, Anne, you should look at who's wearing the crown at this moment. <laughs> And ask yourself, who's the boss? <laughs> Just leave that with you to have a little think about it. <laughs> now, I could have been Cornish born, but I'm not, because my father's RAF work took him to Wales around that time. But I am most certainly Cornish bred. And as some of you here may know, I have worked for 35 years or so in a profession which comes under the broad canopy of the arts or rather what my granny used to call acting the goat. <laughs> so, Cornwall and the arts. So on paper, Falmouth University and I are a pretty good match. But being a good match on paper is not why I'm so completely honored to become chancellor of this wonderful and prestigious institution. There are 5,000 reasons why I accepted the invitation. 5,000 students if I include the postgrads, who have come to Falmouth to study and then hopefully work in the arts. 5,000 dreamers with their big, wild dreams. 10,000 bish parents who have all agreed with the 5,000 dreamers that it's a good idea to do a degree in something the education secretary is currently warning students to steer clear of. She has claimed that the arts are not future proof. Engineering, maths and science are apparently future proof. You can put them into the dishwasher of life and they will retain their logic, their sparkle and most importantly their ability to bring you economic success. I would counter the education secretary's argument with the statistics from this very institution. Falmouth seems pretty future proof in terms of real jobs in the arts. It's in the top 26% for graduate employment prospects, for goodness sake. What people want to know in these austere times 
is can you get a job? At Falmouth, the answer is clearly, yes, you can. If Rembrandt had come to Falmouth, who knows, he could have been designing sportswear for Nike in the USA or Sweden, or running advertising campaigns in India, or illustrating children's books, or designing the artwork for gaming. He might have been like these young people, at the forefront of a new wave in arts employment coming out of our best institutions. Because what future-proof really means is that you define the future. Our young enterprising dreamers will make the new rules and forge new careers in cutting edge areas of the arts where the rewards will be rich. And anyway, as we all realize in our deep heart of hearts, we know that as a society, we can't live properly without the arts. Okay, they aren't food or water or shelter or clothing, but how come then, since the beginning of time, We've always told stories, made paintings, sung songs, and danced. Why? Because we really want to, and we really need to. We need to express ourselves and be heard in the most excellent ways. We have a visceral, vital need to communicate and connect with each other, to entertain, to share our passions, to understand and empathize with each other, and to make sense of our world, to shape it, to change it. Arts are fundamental to the integrity of our society. We know that, fact. So in 2015, I think the University of Falmouth matters more than ever, actually. An institution which celebrates and champions the arts with such excellence, and has done so in various guises since 1902. In a time of austerity, the arts is increasingly the preserve of those who can afford to pursue it, those who can afford to wait, develop, fail, who can afford to intern for expenses only. And that, ladies and gentlemen, cannot be allowed to happen. The arts is only as rich and creative as it is diverse, and we must pay attention to that. The opportunities here at Falmouth offer the very best in arts-based further education to anyone that makes the grades and wants to come. So if you work hard enough, you can come to Falmouth. Here, we are a level playing field. Here, we rise up with our 5,000 strong voices and remember our Cornish motto, one and all. Onan hag ol. And one and all, is who the arts belong to, and one and all must ever be its rallying cry. And let's just stop for a minute to remember where this game-changing, remarkable vanguard of a university is. Uniquely, it's in Cornwall, God's own county, the edge of the country, the place D.H. Lawrence described as like the beginning of the world, wonderful. This is an environment of extreme and breathtaking beauty, of moors, coves, cliffs, woods, raging surf and gentle pools, and weather and cream and endless, endless sky. This is the setting against which these lucky Falmouth learners dream and plan and achieve. Like those who've gone before, like Lanyon, Causley, Hepworth, Frost, Dark and Wallace, just like the St. Ives artists, our students have followed the light to Cornwall. And let me tell you, henceforth, Cornwall will forever be in their blood and in their growing minds. It will creep up on them in the most unexpected moments in their future lives, when their DNA will whisper to them and remind them that once they belonged here. And they will remember the beauty with great love and they will take Cornwall with them wherever they go. Because you may choose to leave Cornwall, but believe me, it never leaves you. As I see it, one of the most important aspects of my role as your Chancellor is to champion this fantastic university and everything it represents. To that end, I pledge to you my utter loyalty, and to prove it, I promise 
that I will take on any other university chancellor. <laughs> I will fight them. <laughs> I don't mean metaphorically, I will actually fight them. <laughs> with weapons, with kicking and with biting. And let me tell you, these are very strong teeth, well trained on a lifetime of my mother's bulletproof pasties. <laughs> I will be your warrior, your bodicea. Bring it on, Lord Kestenbaum at Plymouth, <laughs> and Lady Benjamin at Exeter, and HRH, the Earl of Wessex at Bath. No problem. And as for Zandra Rhodes and Melvin Bragg and Sandy Toxvig, <laughs> easy. <laughs> and the Princess Royal at Edinburgh, come and have a go if you think you're hard enough, ma'am. <laughs> Trust me when I tell you that if they dare to oppose us, and if I am called upon to do so, I will willingly, dutifully batter them all until they are ended. <laughs> Fact. Charles Causley said that creative artists of any shape or form need one special gift in addition to their own talent, and that is courage. The courage to reveal their creative talent, to risk, to fail, and to ceaselessly try again. We need these courageous farmer students because as Pablo Picasso said of all art, they are the weapons of war against brutality and darkness. Let's give them all, students and staff alike, every support they need to be creative, connected and courageous and to retain their playful hearts here in the splendid, magical, exquisite light of Cornwall. In that endeavour, I will remain their loyal and occasionally violent <laughs> Chancellor. Thank you. <laughs>